All right, so uh, here we have the uh, Vet Specs uh, PM100 surgical monitor. Uh, the the PM100 is their flagship system, and it's giving you essentially all the monitoring functions that that you can get in a modern day system with uh, ECG, pulse ox, blood pressure, uh, and capnography. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Vet Specs and their company because what they've done is they they've evolved over the years. They serve only the veterinary industry, and what I mean by evolved is they have gone away from the traditional design of having a monitor box with all of the processing and electronics within the unit. In this case, the PM100 uh, unit serves as the power source. It's obviously the display for the data, and you've got your control buttons along the front. But uh, where they're different is they've externalized the processing portions of the monitor as far as the, the monitoring parameters. And what I mean by that is they've uh, manufactured these external modules. And for instance, this is the uh, multi-parameter surgical module, as you'll see their main module. And this module contains all the electronics for your ECG, temperature, pulse ox, uh, and respiration uh, circuitry. So all the processing is done here. This is the blood pressure module. And, and these are the two modules you would get uh, and use uh, more for the surgical applications. Uh, with that being said, why would the modules be helpful? Um, in the vet industry, as you can imagine, uh, the veterinarians don't have uh, uh, multiple surgical monitors, multifunction monitors sitting around. And if they happen to have an issue, by having an external module, uh, VetSpecs is able to send to the veterinarian a brand new module, uh, overnight it, whatever it takes, and problem solved and they're up and running. Also, the, uh, the modules uh, serve uh, by having them externalized. Uh, an additional advantage is if there's any upgrades, if there's any major upgrades to the technologies involved. For instance, if uh, VetSpecs were to have a, a, a better software version they can literally just send a new blood pressure module to the customer and they're upgraded automatically. So again, some big advantages. Uh, with that being said, um, you have again the main monitor, the, uh, the multi-parameter module, the blood pressure module, and then you have all of the sensors and probes that attach to the modules. And of course the sensors and probes here, they're going to attach to the patient. And so essentially a three-part process the monitor, the power source, the modules for processing the data, and the sensors and probes which detect the signals uh, you know, as they attach to the patient. And so what I'd like to do is, is essentially talk about the sensors and probes now and, uh, and really show you uh, what VetSpecs has done there that's it's also very unique and, and again uh, in line with what VetSpecs is attempting to do and that's to make a vet specific system. So I'm going to talk about the, uh, the main module and uh, a nice long power cord or uh, cable, if you will, that goes from the module uh, to the monitor, uh, about seven feet in length or so. So just plug that right into the side of the unit. Um, you then have for your uh, ECG and temperature port uh, in the middle, you're able to choose either esophageal probes uh, or leads to the body. And in doing so, this gives the veterinarian some options. If they're in a surgical procedure, the patient's intubated, you'll just choose one of two different sizes of esophageal probe. Uh, they have them labeled very simply, uh, cat probe and dog probe. And uh, what we found is that the cat probe, although it's labeled cat, um, it's really applicable to patients from about five pounds on up to about 30 pounds. And so again, if a patient's uh, under anesthesia, uh, under 30 pounds, just simply grab this probe. Uh, the way that it works is, is basically by inserting the probe into the esophagus of the patient. You've got your uh, three contacts, your positive, negative, and ground. They basically serve the same purpose as the external leads. I'll talk about those in a minute. But by inserting that into the esophagus, you're going to get that beautiful EKG proximity to the patient's heart because it's in the esophagus. You're going to get an EKG that's, that's really... Uh, pretty much uncompromised or incomparable uh, heart rate. And what VetSpecs has also done that's pretty intelligent is they've built in a, uh, a temperature sensor. And so once this is in the esophagus of the patient, you're getting that EKG, heart rate, and core temperature with one connection uh, to the body. 
And again, this module, uh, if you could sort of imagine uh, in a surgical environment, uh, the monitor on a cart or on a shelf, this module would be near the head of the patient and you just simply plug into this uh, module the, the particular probe that you want to use. And VetSpecs does provide a, uh, an extension cable that's about uh, two and a half, three feet long if you need more length between the module and the patient. And so that, that cable comes with the system. But there's your esophageal probes. Um, uh, and you know we'll move on from there. These are your uh, uh, ECG lead wires. And uh, again, uh, a minor innovation, but certainly practical because uh, in the veterinary industry, if, if you're having to do an awake patient, uh, you, you, you find that the traditional type of clips that are available have uh, basically teeth on them, uh, what they call alligator clips. And what VetSpecs has done is they've uh, gone to a true flat clip. So they've got a nice spring intensity, but no teeth. So they do hold on well, but they, they don't hurt the patient. So much more tolerated uh, for the awake patient. And, uh, and quite honestly, even if it's a patient under anesthesia, uh, if you're having to do leads to the body, you're not gonna have any trauma to the, to the patient's skin. So again, a nice innovation there on the lead wires. We then go to their uh, pulse oximeter sensors. Uh, again, some, some changes that are uh, a bit unique uh, as, as far as monitoring systems go. They have your traditional pulse ox tongue sensor, and then they've also uh, designed a pulse ox leg, toe, and web sensor. And there, there are actually some fundamental differences. Uh, as far as pulse ox tongue sensors go, uh, just like any monitor out there, put, put this right on the tongue, you'll get that uh, red waveform, your pulse ox value. Uh, you even get an individual pulse rate, a peripheral pulse for the location of the pulse ox sensor. And that's kind of nice to see that the pulse rate uh, on the monitor is matching the patient's heart rate. As far as their leg toe sensor, um, it is truly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, different. Uh, it has uh, an LED light source in it that's about 30% stronger uh, than that that's found in the tongue sensor. And the clip itself uh, has a spring intensity that's about 30% stronger as well. And so when you hook this to the patient, uh, it's going to hold on better. It's, it's really designed for the peripheral areas of the patient's body. And uh, uh, again, with that uh, stronger light source, it's going to penetrate through thicker tissue, uh, work better on darker, darker pigment uh, to where uh, your traditional human type sensors, they, they just aren't strong enough. And so VetSpecs has really done what, what I believe to be a, a pretty good job here. We then move on to the capnography. And again, your main module would uh, allow the esophageal probes or leads to hook to it. Uh, the module would then also allow your lingual or leg toe sensor to hook to it. And then uh, last but not least is the uh, VetSpecs CO2 sensor. And uh, this is uh, what they call the mini cap sensor. Um, it's, it's about the smallest uh, mainstream sensor uh, for CO2 monitoring that I've seen. Um, and and I, what, what makes this sensor so unique is that previous generations of CO2 uh, sensors would uh, basically average so when you hook this up to the patient's trach tube, if you will, this hooks right to the endotracheal tube uh, of the patient, and then your anesthesia tube, actually the other way around, this will hook to the trach tube, your anesthesia tube here. Uh, this sensor, different from uh, just a generation before, less than a year ago, uh, it is processing data on a breath-for-breath -breath calculation. So on your capnograph, you'll get a real-time waveform. Your CO2 value is, is literally being calculated each time the patient breathes as well as the respiratory rate and what I what I mean by that again is that previous generations would actually give you a real excuse me a real-time waveform but your values would actually be calculated on a 30 second average so this new sensor is is faster um, quite a bit smarter uh, again a little bit smaller than previous generations and also one of the uh, uh, new advents on these mainstream sensors uh, that VetSpecs has, and I, and I believe there are some other companies that have this as well, but you're not only getting your patient's entitled tidal CO2 value, you're also getting uh, uh, what we call a, a fractional inspired value. So this is basically letting you know their, their uh, end uh, tidal volume 
our CO2 value at the end of each breath is also as well letting you know uh, if the patient is re-breathing their own CO2 and that's a really nice number to have for, for assessing a, a patient's ventilation. So those are those are the different sensors that hook to the to the uh, main module. Uh, all very nice and easy. Um, you know, again, connection, just one cable to the unit, and then all of your sensors and probes hooked to this module. There is, uh, by the way, uh, VetSpecs produces or has available uh, a simpler version of the CO2 sensor, what they, what they refer to as an airway direct respiration sensor. Uh, not quite as advanced. It, it basically is a sensor that hooks right to the trach tube as well and it picks up the uh, patient's uh, uh, respiratory movement. Actually, it picks up uh, with temperature change. So as the patient breathes in and out, uh, the waveform will show up here. It gives you the same respiratory type of calculation. Uh, their basic respiratory sensor just does not, of course, give you the CO2 value. And so that is an option with vet specs, which is kind of nice because uh, at the end of the day, uh, capnography technology is expensive. There's a lot uh, of technology in this little sensor and to be able to have that option and maybe save a little cost is, is pretty nice. All right, so again that's uh, your main module and all the pieces that hook to it. We then have our blood pressure module. Uh, the blood pressure uh, was intentionally designed to uh, be a different module or a separate module and that is because your main module will be generally at the head of the patient. Your blood pressure module will generally be located more at the rear of the patient on the rear leg or the tail. And so uh, nice to have the two pieces separated out. As far as the blood pressure goes, uh, VetSpecs has, uh, uh, again, uh, gone outside the, the traditional thinking and they've manufactured a blood pressure that is uh, a two-part design. So like all blood pressure monitors, uh, VetSpecs is of course using an occlusion cuff to occlude flow, uh, but in addition to the cuff, they're also using uh, this uh, very uh, simple looking, albeit it's simple looking, it's a pressure sensitive band that works along with the cuff. And so you would, uh, you would apply the occlusion cuff uh, uh, to the patient's limb, the sensor band would be just distal to the cuff, and what that does is it allows for the blood pressure to actually give you a plesmographic waveform here. You'll see it in blue. So this is really the only non-invasive blood pressure system uh, that I'm aware of that will give you a waveform prior to your ability to actually, I shouldn't say your ability, but the, the numerical values are going to uh, be a derivative or come after your waveform. So again, a very nice technology. And, and I'll talk a, talk a little bit more about the blood pressure because it, it definitely is different. Um, and I'd say a bit of a hybrid as far as the technologies that are out there. And again, I'll talk a little bit more, but the fact that you're getting a waveform real time, uh, this system of course does give your systolic, diastolic, and mean arterial pressures. Uh, and of course, again, staying with the theme here, you have a heart rate from your ECG. For your SpO2, you have a peripheral pulse. And on your blood pressure, you also have in the lower right an additional peripheral pulse from the source of the blood pressure. And this is really nice to be able to see that on this monitor that you're getting uh, matching pulse rates uh, from different uh, monitoring parameters. Again, essentially if they're matching, uh, you can be confident that the monitor is monitoring properly. I'm gonna set this over to the side. And uh, what I'd like to do now is dive in a little bit more into the blood pressure. I'm going to kind of move some stuff out of the way and we'll talk about the blood pressure monitoring now. That's good.